An autopsy is a detailed examination of the human body after death. It is used to determine the likely time and cause of death, as well as to evaluate the presence of diseases and or injuries. An autopsy is conducted by a pathologist, which is a doctor with a specialty level training in how to do the procedure and how to effectively analyze the tissues and body fluids. First, you need to obtain permission. Normally, permission for an autopsy is given by the deceased person's family. Second, we need to gather the appropriate data before commencing the autopsy. Begin with an examination of the outside of the body. First, note the height, weight, age, and sex of the body. Note any distinguishing characteristics like birthmarks, scars, or tattoos as well. Perform an x-ray. An x-ray will help you to find any broken or fractured bones or medical devices such as a pacemaker. These records can also be used to identify the subject. Next, you need to check the genital area for any signs of rape. Bruising and tearing are common in such cases. Take a blood sample. It can be used for DNA purposes or it can help to determine if the victim was on drugs, had been using alcohol, or whether there was poisoning involved. Open the body cavity once the initial examinations are complete. Using a scalpel, make one large Y-shaped incision from each shoulder across the chest, then down to the pubic bone. Spread open the skin and check to see if any ribs are broken. Examine each organ in the chest cavity individually. Weigh each organ, record anything notable, and take a tissue sample in case further examination is needed. Observe the eyes carefully. The presence of tiny broken blood vessels can be a sign of choking or strangulation. Look at the head. Check for any trauma to the skull, including fractures or bruises. Then remove the top of the skull and remove the brain. Follow the same procedure as with all the other organs. Weigh it and take a sample. Finish your notes or your dictated recording after the autopsy is complete. State the cause of death and the reasons that brought you to that conclusion. Mention any details, no matter how small, as they may be the final clues needed to stop a murder or to put a family member's mind at ease. What happens to your body when you're strangled? Let's think. In the movies, when someone's been strangled, they usually speak with a really hoarse voice. This is because the larynx, located in the neck, connects the pharynx to the trachea and is responsible for your voice pitch and tonality and this is massively affected during strangulation. Your head is like exploding. In some strangulation cases, the arteries becomes obstructed, cutting off oxygen to the brain. And the sudden decrease in oxygenated blood to the brain will kill you pretty quickly. And when oxygenated blood is incapable of reaching the brain, there's a serious problem. So when pressure is applied to the jugular vein, a backup of blood can occur in the brain, and this can quickly cause unconsciousness. Cardiac arrhythmia can also happen. It is caused when too much pressure is applied to the carotid artery nerve ganglion. That means when you press hard enough on the carotid arteries, your heart will fall out of rhythm sending it into cardiac arrest. The tightness around the throat also sends cold red signals to the brain, alerting it to freak out and panic centers begin to lit up. The amygdala, or fear center of the brain, kicks into high gear and is responsible for both responding to pain and actions of self-preservation. When it's over, it's not necessarily over because strangulation can cause complications such as pulmonary edema. It's when fluid seeps into the lungs and it can cause trauma to the chest wall and can be fatal. So what can I do to help a person who suffered from strangulation? There's many things you can do to help especially when the person is still gasping for help even with poor clinical status, such as immediate intubation, resuscitation, assisted ventilation and intensive care treatment. Oh! By the way, I've read something in the internet. What's the difference between ligature and strangulation? Hi, I'm Lou. And I'm going to explain the difference between strangulation and hanging. In strangulation the killing force is not the weight of the body. Because the force a strangler can apply to a neck, either with hands or with a ligature, is far less than the weight of the subject's body, a hanged neck will be much more damaged than a strangled neck. In hanging, a mark all the way around, a crushed larynx, or broken neck is more likely than in strangling, but in strangling a broken hyoid bone is more likely. A hanged body's neck may also be stretched. Both procedures can kill by squeezing off blood flow in the neck, closing off breathing, 
or possibly stopping the heart directly by pressing on the neck's carotid bodies, which govern blood pressure. And hanging where a long drop is applied to the body, death by broken neck is also a possibility. Oh I see. I've learned so much. Thank you. You're welcome.